a sharp pain in her chest, as though a hand was squeezing her heart. She gasped and clutched her chest, but said nothing, thinking it would pass. But the pain only grew worse, and that night she had a dream. Long ago, in the heart of Azumiri village, there was a woman named Iyama who was famed for her cooking. Every market day, her food store would be overflowing with customers, while the other vendors could only wash in envy. Her kara was crispy, her jollof rice fresh with spices, and her stews, oh, her stews, they were said to have the perfect blend of heat and flavor. So much that anyone who tasted her food once would always come back for more. But whispers soon filled the air. How could one woman's food be so much better than the rest? How was it that even on days when her ingredients seemed scarce, her store remained full, while others could barely sell a bowl of eba? People began to wonder if there was more to Yama's success than just her cooking skills. What the villagers didn't know was that Iyama had made a pact with the Uhamiri, the river goddess who lived deep in the sacred river. Many years ago, when Iyama had just begun selling her food, she struggled to make ends meet. She worked hard, waking up before dawn to prepare her meals, but it seemed like no matter what she did, she couldn't attract more customers. Desperate to find a way out, she visited an old woman who lived by the river bank, a woman rumored to have knowledge of the spirits. The old woman gave Ihama a simple warning. The Uhamiri can give you the success you seek, but it will come at a price. Blinded by her desire for success, Ihama agreed without fully understanding what the price would be. That night, under the light of a full moon, she went to the river and called upon the Uramiri. The goddess appeared, a shimmery form rising from the river, and she smiled at Hiyama. You seek success, the goddess said, and I can grant it, but you must give me your heart, not in death, but in life. You will be prosperous, but you will never feel love, joy, or true happiness again. Ihama hesitated for only a moment. I will give you anything, she said. I just want to succeed. The Ohamiri laughed softly, touched Ihama's chest, and the deal was sealed. From that day on, Ihama's food business flourished. People came from neighboring villages to buy her food. She grew wealthy and her name became famous across the land. But the more successful she became, the emptier she felt. She could no longer laugh or even smile. She watched people celebrate and enjoy her food, but she felt nothing inside. Years passed and Iyama's fame continued to grow, but so did the emptiness within her. At night, she would lie awake, staring at the ceiling, unable to remember what it felt like to be truly alive. She was trapped in her own success, bound by the pact she had made. Then one day, a young preacher arrived in the village. He was traveling from town to town, spreading the word of God and performing miracles. His name was Pastor Udo. And people whispered that he had the power to break even the darkest spiritual bounds. Pastor Udo came to the market one afternoon and bought food from Ihama's store. As was his custom, he said a brief prayer before eating. As soon as the words left his lips, something strange happened. Ihama felt a sharp pain in her chest, as though a hand was squeezing her heart. She gasped and clutched her chest but said nothing, thinking it would pass. But the pain only grew worse, and that night she had a dream. In the dream, Wamira appeared before her enraged. 
someone has interfered with our part. The goddess east. Your heart belongs to me. No one can break my hold. The next day, Ihama sought out Pastor Udo, hoping to understand what was happening to her. When she found him, she confessed everything. The pact with the river goddess, the success, the emptiness, and the pain she now felt. Pastor Udo listened quietly, and when she was done, he looked at her with compassion. The Oamiri may have claimed your heart, but God is stronger than any spirit, he said. If you truly wish to be free, you must renounce the pact and seek God's deliverance. Ihama, desperate for a way out of the misery that had consumed her for years, agreed. Pastor Odor led her to the church, where they prayed for hours. As they prayed, the air around them grew thick, and suddenly the ground trembled. Ihama felt as though a great weight was being lifted from her chest, but at the same time, she heard the furious wails of the river goddess. The Huamiri appeared in the room, her watery form twisting in anger. You cannot break the pact, she screamed, her voice echoing like thunder. She belongs to me. She belongs to me. So Pastor Odo stood firm, holding this Bible eye. In the name of Jesus Christ, you have no power here. Release her now. With a final scream, the goddess vanished, and Hiyama collapsed to the floor, gasping for her. For the first time in years, she felt her heart beating freely in her chest. Tears filled her eyes, tears of relief, tears of joy. She had been freed. In the days that followed, Ayama's business changed. Her food was still delicious, but it no longer had the unnatural hold over people that it once had. She had to work harder to win back her customers, but this time, she did it honestly. And though her wealth was not as great as before, she was truly happy for the first time in years. The village marveled at her transformation, and when people asked what had changed, Ayama would smile, a real smile, and say, It was God who set me free. And so, Ayama's story became a lesson to all who heard it, that true happiness comes from within, and that nothing can stand against the power of God. With this, we've come to the end of the story. Don't forget to tap the subscribe button, like, and comment. Also, please share with your friends and family. Thank you so much. We love you, and we hope to see you next time.